In 1124, Stirling was made a royal borough by David I. 2024 marks the 900th anniversary. The beheading or heading stone lies on Mott Hill, the most northerly part of the Gowan Hill in Stirling. From the hill, the vistas are stunning and the Wallace Monument is one of the most notable landmarks to be seen from it. A Roman fortification once stood here and parts of a wall were once seen. Sometime after the Romans left, the area became a place for meeting out justice with the beheading of those who flouted the law, hence its name, Mott Hill, also known as Heading Hill. Trying to find out the names of those who lost their heads has proved difficult as many of the records had been destroyed, but enough information exists that a wooden block rested on a stone, which became known as the heading or beheading stone. In the latter part of the 19th century, this stone was encased in a circular iron frame and rests on a pedestal made of concrete. The stone had been discovered at the bottom of the hill, but Dr. W. H. Forrest had it moved to the top of the hill. On Saturday, 17 September 1887, the stone was handed over to the care of the local authority by the local archaeological society. It's roughly round in shape and measures 31 inches by 31 inches. At one end it has a thickness of 10 inches, which gradually rises to a height of 15 inches at the other end. Thanks to the prevailing weather conditions, it has a polished look to it, with a number of holes in it. These were for attaching a block of wood to it. One of its sides was hollowed out its full length, measuring 18 inches by 2 inches. It's believed this was where the unfortunate victim would have laid their chest when kneeling in readiness for the full letter of the law to be carried out. On its surface can be seen a number of marks left by the executioner's axe. At the time of the reign of James I, it's known a number of men were indeed beheaded at the hill. The king had just returned to Scotland following his years of captivity in England, but he had learned how to rule and was well qualified to govern any lawlessness in his homeland. Murdoch Stuart, the Duke of Albany, had ruled Scotland on the king's behalf when he was a prisoner and placed the king on the throne at Schoon, the ancient place where the coronation took place. Alexander Stuart, Albany's son, was knighted at the same time. The king convened his first parliament shortly after this and discovered that recklessness and disregard for the law was prevalent under the governance of Albany and his son, and the state of such anarchy had a profound effect on the king. He exclaimed, "'Let God but grant me life,' and there shall not be a spot in my dominions where the key shall not keep the castle and the first bush the cow, though I myself should lead the life of a dog to accomplish it. The king made it clear that he was in power and control. As such, at the second parliament held in Perth, Murdoch Stuart and his son Alexander were arrested with around 20 nobles. By this time, Walter Stuart, Albany's eldest son, and Duncan, the Earl of Lennox, along with Sir Robert Graham, were in prison, and Albany's wife, Isabella, had also been captured. 
on 24th May 1425, although some sources cite 1424, the trial of the main prisoners got underway. The court was held at the Palace of Stirling, with the king sitting in judgment. The jury was made up of 21 of the main nobles at court, who supported James. The case was conducted in great solemnity, but with great pomp. Walter Stewart was found guilty of robbery and condemned to death. His execution was carried out on the Heading Hill on the same day his trial took place. The following day, Murdoch, Duke of Albany, and his son Alexander and his brother-in-law, the Earl of Lennox, were all found guilty of treason and condemned to death. It's unknown what charges were laid before Alexander or the Earl of Lennox. Immediately following the trial, the condemned men were taken under a strong guard to the Heading Hill and one by one were executed, the axe of the executioner falling three times. The large estates owned by Albany and Lennox were forfeited to the Crown. Sir James Stuart, the youngest son of Albany, managed to avoid arrest and made his way to Ireland where he found sanctuary. Sir Robert Graham and a number of his associates were also beheaded at Stirling following the murder of the King. Another execution to take place at the Hedon Hill, as it was called, was that of Robert Menticht or Menteith, who was executed by William Willie Forsyth or Forsyth on 16th October 1525. It's believed Robert was someone of note, but what his rank was or what crime he'd been convicted of was not recorded. It's believed Sir Walter Scott alluded to the stone in The Lady of the Lake. He wrote, And thou, O sad and fatal mound, that oft has heard the death axe sound, as on the noblest of the land fell the stern headsman's bloody hand. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.